Hey everyone, welcome to ONTAP. I'm Chris, and today we are going to be talking about one of Italy's most renowned breweries, Moretti. Andiamo! Now, when thinking about top-tier beer-producing nations with the longest-running brewing traditions, Italy might not be one of the first places that comes to mind. And indeed, while the Italians have one of the strongest traditions of viticulture on planet Earth, i.e. the growing of wine, as well as a very strong history of producing high-quality liqueurs like aperitifs and digestifs, beer is something for which they are not generally seen as an industry leader. While it is true that compared to nations such as Germany, the United States, Britain, Belgium, and others, the Italians nonetheless have a notable history of beer production. And this brewing tradition was established, or it was really strengthened, we could say, in part, by the creation of the Moretti Brewery. Moretti was established by Guido Moretti in 1859 in the town of Udine, located in the region of Friuli, which is in northeastern Italy, pretty close to Venice, actually. Mr. Moretti was, like a number of European brewers at the time, we've actually talked about this with Bax and Heineken, opening up a brewery in sort of the mid to late 1800s when bottom fermenting lagers were becoming all the rage. And actually the original Moretti lager recipe has remained unchanged ever since. In 1860, the region of Friuli was still at the time actually under the control of the Austrian Empire. The 1860s was the period of Italian unification. So by 1866, the region was part of the newly established Kingdom of Italy. During the 1860s, there was actually quite a lot of conflict, a number of battles that were fought between the Austrian forces and the Italian forces who were looking to unify the whole country under one flag. But words of Italian unification aside, the northeastern location for the establishment of this brewery actually makes a lot of sense because large parts of northeastern Italy, not just Friuli, but especially the nearby region of South Tyrol or Tyrol, actually have a very strong German-speaking Austrian cultural footprint. This extends to a drinking tradition that features popularity for beer, not just wine. The Moretti's themselves were a family of merchants before the brewery was established, and they received most of what they needed for their business, and then later the brewery, from nearby Austria. The Moretti brewery continued to grow throughout the 20th century, and eventually was producing beer not just for the region of Friuli, but eventually all of Italy. And then, soon after that, they were exporting it to other countries. The company was actually just family-owned until 1989, at which point it was sold off and changed hands a couple of times before becoming a subsidiary of Heineken in 1996, a position it's held ever since. And for a time, um, the Moretti Brewery actually had a big focus on football or soccer. They actually constructed a stadium in Udine and from 1997 to 2008 actually hosted their own football tournament. Eventually the stadium was shut down and the tournament stopped taking place. Heineken has said that they may at some point start these tournaments up again, but so far that has yet to happen. Moretti beer is currently sold in over 40 countries worldwide and is arguably one of the top recognized Italian breweries internationally, after, I might say, Peroni, but that's just me. Currently, uh, there's around 5 million barrels a year, US, produced between the six different Heineken Italia breweries, of which Moretti is the primary brand. So I'm gonna estimate that maybe three to three and a half million of those barrels are Moretti beer specifically, but that is just a complete guess. Moretti is also a company that has taken home a number of serious wins, actually, in international beer competitions, making it actually one of the few Italian companies to have done so. In 2006, actually, it won both a gold and silver medal at the World Beer Cup, which is the largest beer competition in the world, and akin to something of like the Olympics for the brewing industry, or that's at least how some people have referred to it. And given the fact that the type of beers Moretti was competing over, these were lagers and box, is, a, is an area generally exclusively dominated by German and American brewers, um, the win for Moretti was quite an unexpected victory for an Italian company. And while this isn't exactly related to beer competitions, I personally have noticed that Moretti beer tends to be available at sort of nicer Italian restaurants and pizzerias, which I think speaks to the quality of the Moretti brand. The logo of Moretti, a picture of a mustached gentleman in a green jacket and hat enjoying a nice mug of beer, is a very famous image in Italy. Some people have even referred to the mustache of the man as, quote, the most famous mustache in all of Italy. And that is going up against some pretty stiff competition. Uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But nonetheless, I want to keep my sources of most people, or some people, deliberately very vague. There's also some question as to who that man actually is. And while we don't really know for sure, according to the company, allegedly the story goes something like this. 
1942, the nephew of Guido Moretti was walking around the town of Udine, and he saw a gentleman who looked like the man in the photo sitting down at a table at his local trattoria, enjoying a mug of Moretti beer, wearing a green jacket, a green hat, and a tie. The nephew came over and asked the man, can I take your photo, please? The man said, sure. And then when the nephew asked, well, what do you want in return? The man said something to the effect of another beer of Moretti. Whether that's tr true or not, we don't know, but again, it makes for a good story. And actually, the character of the man has been played by a number of very famous Italian actors over the years, such as the notoriety of the company's logo. Depending on where you live, Moretti is best known for one or maybe two styles of beer. Their primary flagship brand is the Birra Moretti, La Autentica, at 4.6% ABV. So it will have a typical straw yellow color with an aroma of barley and some slight floral notes. And like most lagers, it will have that light, clean, malty flavor and a little bit of subtle bitterness. The second most well-known Moretti beer, at least in the United States, is La Rosa, or The Red. Now, I always used to think La Rosa meant pink, just because that's what Rosada is in Spanish, pink. But apparently it does mean red. And I don't speak Italian, so yes, I did have to look that up. La Rosa is a Doppelbock, or German-style darker lager beer. As a Doppelbock, it's going to have sort of a heavier body and some very sort of malty, toasted, rich kind of liquid bread notes to it. And of course, I get that's what beer is, but with the Doppelbock style, that liquid bread feeling's really gonna come through. Moretti also produces, though, a number of other beers outside of just those two, especially if you live in a country other than the United States. And I would imagine the closer you get to Italy, the more the variety of Moretti beers increases. It's just in the U.S., those are the only two you can get. These varieties include premium lagers, such as the Sansucci and Bafo de Oro. There's also the Doppio Malto, which is a blonde ale. And more recently, there was the rollout of Le Regionale series, which is basically a series of different Moretti beers produced around the sort of culinary traditions of different regions of Italy. Italians, first of all, if I butchered any of those pronunciations, I'm very sorry. Uh, and also, second question for you Italians, and actually Europeans sort of in general, um, what kinds of Moretti beers can you find in your either region of Italy or European nation? Um, let me know in the comments below. It is now time to try those beers. So first up, we have the classic Birra Moretti Lager, La Autentica. And we can, we can see here, right, the, uh, the mustache gentleman in his green jacket, green hat, and tie, enjoying a nice mug of Moretti beer in his local trattoria. Yeah. Now it's a straw, straw yellow color. Very pale, yeah, no, very, very pale beer. Well, I mean, so yeah, it, it tastes like a lager. Um, it's good. It's not, um, it doesn't feel very uh, sort of weak um, or it doesn't have any um, kind of unpleasant taste to it. So it's of course not a, not a light beer, nothing like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a basic lager flavor. It's very clean, very crisp. Um, flavors are very subtle. Um, so it doesn't have, there's not really much sharpness to it like um, the, the lager in the Beck's video. Um, and I don't know how malty it is though. It's also, it doesn't sort of have like a heavy malty flavor. It's very, it's very light and, and crisp. Let me take another taste. Well, yeah, no, it, it doesn't smell like much. I think I like that second sip more. Here's, okay, you know, I think, I think this is growing on me actually. The thing that I like about this is how clean it tastes. It tastes like really, really crisp, clean beer. And I get obviously that's what lagers generally are, but this one especially, it's just like, almost like the quality of the water, right? Sort of, it's, it's one of these things where when you're drinking this, it just feels like it's cleansed your palate in just this very, very refreshingly nice sort of way. Again, it doesn't have the sharpness of something like a Bex, um, and it doesn't have that kind of, I'd say sort of fuller, maltier flavor that you get with some other lagers. It's just very, very clean, crisp, and pleasant to drink. So next up, 
we have La Rosa, the red. Okay. This is a Doppelbock, so this is gonna be heavier. And um, yeah, 7.2% ABV. So this is gonna have a slightly have slightly larger kick than the last one. Oh, oh, yep, now that's quite a quite a dark beer. I like that color. Quite a bit of a head there. Yes, no, that's a very, very sort of deep, very sort of deep brown, um, but not, not quite a brown ale. It's sort of a, it's almost like an amber brown. It's a very nice color. Good, good head there. Um, let's give it a sniff. Yes. Okay, I can, I can smell, it smells sweet. Yeah, sort of a, a sweet, sweet, malty sort of grain, grain flavor. Oh yeah. Yes, oh, that's, that's lovely. That's really nice. Um, it's, it's got definitely a bit more of a punch, obviously, with a higher ABV, uh, unsurprisingly, and yeah, it's sort of this really nice mix of maltiness and sweetness together. Um, it's it, it is, and it does indeed have kind of like a liquid, a liquid bread flavor. And as I said, I know exactly that's that is what beer beer is. But here you you've got that sort of heavier body. It's it's the beer is much heavier. It's got a very heavy body. But the nice thing about it is it's also not viscous. So you drink it, and it's kind of got this sweet, heavy liquid bread flavor, but then it doesn't like stick to the roof of your mouth. Um, it's still very, um, it still has a very nice finish to it. You know, well done, Italy. These are these are both for their types of, for the type of beer that they each are, they're really good. All right, so in conclusion, we have in second place, the classic Bira Moretti Lager. And in first place, we have the La Rosa Doppelbock. Both of these beers I really enjoyed drinking. I thought for each of their styles, they performed admirably, or they were admirable. Beers don't really perform, do they? They're just, they're good. So yes, they're both good. They're both good beers. Um, and I can see actually why sort of both of these won um, gold and silver in 2006 at the World Beer Cup. This one, what I really like about it, as I said, is how uh, clean it tastes. It tastes like a very, very refreshing lager that's just so easy to drink, where it doesn't have a lot of obvious flavors to it, but there's something nice in just its simplicity. It's kind of, I could imagine, like what a lager's supposed to be, right? You can drink this on a hot day, outside, right? Kind of on a, on a plaza, on a piazza, right? Um, or in a piazza, on a piazza, in a piazza. Anyway, adjacent to a piazza, what do you say? Anyway, let me know. By not having any obvious flavor, it's not too sharp, it's not super malty. Um, you know, thankfully it's not skunky or anything. There's you know, no, there's nothing unpleasant about this. There are no sort of unpleasant undertones. Um, it's just a very nice, clean, crisp, refreshing beer that you could have kind of in any situation, honestly. But as nice as this one is, the La Rosa is really great. Um, now I've not, I've definitely had a few Doppelbox now and then, um, and maybe at some point I can, I can compare them, but I just, I love the flavor profile of this. I love sort of that mix of sweetness and maltiness and kind of heavy liquid bread, and you can kind of taste that it has a little bit higher of an alcohol content, but not in any sort of an unpleasant way. Um, it's not viscous, the beer doesn't stick to your mouth, it's heavy, but it still leaves a very pleasant aftertaste. Um, it's really well balanced. It's got a heavy body. This is this has a very light body. This is a very heavy body. Um, but that's not in any way unpleasant. So uh, this one I would say, obviously don't drink in hot weather. This would not work in hot weather. Um, this would be great um, at night, in the winter, in sort of colder environments. Um, but you know what I think this would be best in? This would be best in like the spring or the fall or the, the autumn. So I guess in conclusion, I've just got to say, well done, Moretti. Um, good job, Italy. You know, I, as I said at the beginning, kind of, I don't tend to think of Italy as being a major beer producing nation with sort of the most notable beers that you're gonna find internationally, but these are both really, really nice 
and well-brewed uh, beers in sort of each of their own categories. If any of you can find these beers and try them, I highly recommend. Um, they're, both, they're both very enjoyable to drink in each of their own ways. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hate to sound like a broken record at this point, but what do you think about maybe liking this video and subscribing to the channel? Either way, I hope to see you in the next episode.